Hmm. It's about time. Everyone realistic career mode. Well, the name is pretty bad. So we are rebranding it. So, and what a way to celebrate that by doing a video of the top 18 crashes of F1 Realistic Career Mode. I mean, who even invented that name? Oh yeah, it's me. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoy this. It took so long. And let's begin the newly rebranded F1 Multi-Game Career Mode. In the 2018 Japanese Grand Prix, pinned between Ericsson and Gasly, Roman Grosjean had nowhere else to go. He, luckily Gasly managed to get out of the way before any further contact, but neither was Grosjean or Ericsson going to yield. We're going to take a trip back in time to the 2017 Malaysian Grand Prix. We were battling against Max Verstappen until he dangerously cut across, causing a virtual safety car to be out and ruining our race as well. Luckily, we would come on and come back to P6 at the end of it. We had to give the place back to Perez because we overtaken him during the virtual safety car. Now on board with Max Verstappen. You could see that he got a really good start, overtaking both his teammate and me. But trying to get back to the racing line, didn't notice that I was still there and contact was made. Daniel Ricciardo was another of the drivers to get a good start. He, he did lose out though to his teammate and I piled into him after I got taken out by Max Verstappen. Here I was though, driving my way, cutting across the grass, having to give back the place because the virtual safety car had begun. So, yeah, that is number 17. We're going to take a trip back in time to the 2017 Spanish Grand Prix the same year. I lock my brakes, slam all the way into two drivers, I'm making an amazing shot when you look in photo mode. Number 15. That was Raikkonen versus Ocon. They two collided and caused a multi-car pileup. Lance Stroll was involved, including La um, Charles Leclerc. Ocon later got disqualified, but whilst trying to park up his car, got a grid penalty for slamming into Hulkenberg. Here in the number 18 spot, we have Alonso and Verline at the 2017 Monaco Grand Prix. Vettel got through unscathed, luckily, but it was Alonso and Verline who caused a big collision. Verline crashing out and ruining his chances of getting possible points at that Grand Prix. He would never ever score any points ever in his career. Danny Kvyat was having a battle with us in the Williams. We come across there and unfortunately Kriak goes up the inside and ploughs into us, ploughing him into his teammate and breaking the one golden rule about Formula 1. In the number 12 spot we have Lewis Hamilton and Kevin Magnussen. Grosjean was battling with Hamilton, Hamilton locking up. Um, going through turn 5 and coming across dangerously hitting Sebastian Vettel. Later that lap Magnussen came and bashed into him including Ocon. He ended up retiring due to a mechanical failure that was not to do with this crash. 
Number 11 is Lewis Hamilton again, this time with us in the Red Bull. He goes up the inside at the 2018 Japanese Grand Prix. We give him space, but unfortunately, it's not enough. And I do take the blame for that, unfortunately, now I'm looking at it. We don't give him enough room, and he more or less slides into us. But I would take the blame for that, unfortunately. And that was... Later we would win that championship, that Grand Prix. Us again for the 2017 um, Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. We go up the inside, squeeze um, Bottas, he, we, he, he hits us. And going up the inside he goes. We want to defend our position. We hit him, he hits us. Kind of, you know. But again, no, I take the blame for that. I didn't. I didn't give him nowhere near enough room that he deserved. In the number ninth spot, we have the safety car incident, including Ocon, and later that lap, Marcus Ericsson, as you just saw. The safety car cuts across to Ocon. And then Ericsson does not avoid him and is unsighted. Number eight is the German Grand Prix. Me versus Felipe Massa. He cuts across us and he retires from that race due to that crash. And to be honest, once again I'll take that blame. I'm willing to take that. And up the inside, you could see a bit inevitable, really. And it was a good gun board for Carlos Sainz behind. The Hungarian Grand Prix is up next in 2016. I didn't notice it in the background. But whilst NASA and Palmer were, uh, were really battling for position, on, on the back straight there was contact and the two ended up crashing into each other luckily no one was hurt and they continued their race who didn't continue their race though was Danny Kvyat in the 2016 Canadian Grand Prix as he hits our retire and he retires blocking the pit lane and much ruining NASA's race as well. Julian Palmer gets hit by us and we ruin his race as well. We take a penalty for the next Grand Prix. In number five we have the European Grand Prix in 2016. Perez goes up the inside, hits the inside barrier and unfortunately we cause a pile up involving three cars to retire from that race, including Gutierrez, Danny Kvyat, and one other driver that we will find out soon. Um, it was Verline, I think. Um, to be honest, I, I, I forgot it. It was in 2016, we're in 2019 now in terms of career mode.
me I, my I became a victim of a crash at Bahrain in 2018. It was one of the biggest crashes of the career mode at the time as well as the year. The one thing that beat it though was this. Me losing control of my car, Vettel doing the same, jumping into my car again, causing one humongous pileup involving Charles Leclerc and Lance Stroll, who ended up retiring due to his suspension being broken. Other drivers, including Kevin Magnussen and Brendan Hartley and Gasly, retired also. This is unseen footage of the reason why I did not continue the 2016 F1 career mode. I had a massive crash during FP3 where I went across the grass and lost control of my McLaren, hitting the barrier, flying up in the air and pulling the barrier out of place. This abandoned the session so that no one had set a time and then later it was too wet so the times had to be put into FP2 for the race.